Welcome to section 4.9b. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, what we're going to be talking about is titrations as a continuation about our discussion about acid-base chemistry and acid-base neutralization. So what I want you guys to do is think about this experimental setup as I describe what's going to happen. At the end of this lecture, we're going to go ahead and do a quiz question on this particular setup. Now, a titration is a volumetric analysis, and what it entails is having something called the analyte. Now, the analyte is something that we are trying to evaluate. Usually with the analyte, we know its volume, but we don't know its concentration. So in my experimental setup, what I'm going to have is an Erlenmeyer flask. Now, in that Erlenmeyer flask, I'm going to place 100 mils of HCl. Now, I don't know what the concentration of that HCl is, and that's going to be the point of this experiment. I want to find the concentration of this acid. Now, the other component in our experimental setup is something called the titrant. Now, the titrant is something that we know a lot of information about. In our example, the titrant is going to be in this burette. Now, the titrant is going to be NaOH, and it's going to be at a concentration of one molar. Now, what I'm going to do is when I run a titration, I'm going to get to the end of a reaction. For an acid-base reaction, this means I'm going to try to neutralize my reaction, meaning I'm going to have equal moles of acid and base. When this occurs, my reaction is over. Typically, what's going to happen is I'm going to put an indicator that is going to change colors when the base equals the amount of acid in solution. And so what you can see is my solution is clear, and when I reach my end point, or when my solution is fully neutralized, I will get a pink solution. So keep in mind, it is the addition of this base into my solution that is going to induce this color change. Now, I want to go ahead and specifically talk about the burette and how it is used. This is something that even third-year chemistry students still screw up. Now, what you guys are typically used to are glassware like beakers, Erlenmeyer flasks, and graduated cylinders. Now, these pieces of glassware are meant to pour. And so what you guys will note is that if you look at the gradations on these kinds of glassware, you'll find the lowest number on the bottom, and as you go up the piece of glassware, the gradations increase. And that's because what you do is you pour your solution in there, you measure your solution, and, it, and the glassware contains your liquid. So this one, let's say, is two mils, you go ahead and pour those two mils out. However, a burette isn't a pouring device. It's a draining device. You're going to open this valve right here, and the liquid is going to drain. Now, what you'll notice is the gradations are different. Instead of the lowest number and zero being at the bottom of my piece of glassware, it is graded in the reversed fashion, where zero is at the top of my burette, and as I go down, what you guys will see is the numbers will increase. And so what you're going to do is you are going to read the burette as is. When you take a burette reading, you have to take this into account and you're going to have to report that number. So for example, let's say that I have a burette and this is my initial amount. If I look at this, I would read the burette as 3.3 mils of solution. And what I would record for my initial volume is 3.3. It doesn't matter if my burette is a 50 mil burette or a 25 or a 25 mil burette. I'm not going to do any math. I'm not going to do 50 minus 3.3. I'm not going to do 25 minus 3.3. I'm going to record the reading as is. Now I'm going to go ahead and open the burette and solution is going to drain out of the burette. And then I'm going to take the final reading. Now, in this case, the final reading, we can see the liquid dropped, and now it's at the 3.9 mil mark. And again, I'm going to record this as my final volume. 
Now, if I want to go ahead and measure the volume that is delivered, well, that's going to be the final volume minus the initial volume. And so if I subtract these two numbers, what I find is I delivered 0.6 ml. So again, I want to reiterate for a burette, record the exact value that you see on the burette itself. Now, with that said, let's go back to our initial experimental problem and give you pieces of data. So I'm going to run that titration on that 100 mils of HCl solution. So my initial burette reading is going to be 5 mils. And once I reach the end point, or when I fully neutralize my solution, what I get is a reading of 33.5 mil. With all this information, I want you to calculate the H plus concentration. Now, what some of you guys might have done is you might have used this equation. M1 V1 equals M2 V2. And I want to be clear with you guys on this. This is the wrong equation to use. And this will only work for an acid-base titration is if your acid and base are in a one-to-one -one ratio. If you have a diprotic acid or you have a dibasic base, this equation will lead you astray. This is not an acid-base equation. This equation is for dilution. Now, in this particular case, it would have worked out for you, and that's because it was in a one-to-one -one ratio. But I want to show you the proper way to do this problem. The first thing we want to do is figure out how many mils that we delivered. So we're going to do V final minus V initial, and this will be the volume of NaOH delivered. So we have 33.5 mils minus our initial 5.0 mils. And this gets me 28.5 mils of NaOH. Now remember, for neutralization, the moles of acid have to equal the moles of base. So again, I want to go ahead and try to get moles. Now to get moles, what I can do is I can take the molarity times the volume and that will get me moles. Now the molarity of my solution was one molar. I'm going to write one molar NaOH in a different format. I did this in the last lecture. I can write one molar as one mole of NaOH per thousand mils of solution. Now, I'm going to go ahead and times this by my volume, so 28.5 mils. And what you guys will see is the mils cancel out. This is going to give me 0 0.0285 moles of NaOH. Now, remember what a neutralization reaction means. That means the moles of acid equal the moles of base. So what I can write is if I have 0 0.0285 moles of NaOH, I have 0 0.285 moles of HCl. Now, if this is the case, I have the moles, but I want concentration, and that's done in molarity. So I want to go ahead and divide this by the volume of HCl. So 0 0.0285 moles of HCl is going to be divided by the volume. I have 100 mils, or in other words, I have 0.1 liter. So if I do this out, this is 0 0.285 molar of HCl. All right, Chem1A, I hope that made sense, and remember to stay safe.